Hello everyone, welcome back. I am an environmental and geoscience graduate looking to pursue masters abroad through full scholarship. Then this video is specifically for you. I'm Pawan Shiram, former Erasmus Mundus scholar and former Erasmus Mundus Association president. In this video, I'll be talking with Yadita Pawan Kumar about his successful journey on winning a prestigious Erasmus Mundus scholarship in flood risk analysis. In this video, we'll be discussing 10 key questions and most importantly, the important tips and tricks on how to go about winning a successful Erasmus Mundus scholarship. I've applied for three Erasmus courses mainly, which uh, based on my experience, which I was working on. One was flood risk management, two environmental, uh, and three ocean engineer. Two of them, flood risk and environmental, were from IHE. That was the main consortium. Third one is University of Bogona in Italy. So for the first one. For the ocean engineering, it got rejected directly. I did not uh, make mark because civil engineer is not considered into ocean. I've got uh, until the final round in both of the environmental and flood risk management, but got scholarship for flood risk management. What are your main tips for somebody applying for this field, uh, specifically in terms of CV and the motivation letter? In terms of CV, generally I think if someone has done something related to this topic because if you are a fresh graduate, you don't have any like uh, any information regarding flood risk management for example, there are less probability to take you because uh, as I've seen based upon my CV, if I see, uh, you see my CV, most of them are related to flood risk. So. Uh, I think if you have done something similar work, it adds up to your, uh, it adds the points so that you will get selected easily. Like for, uh, for example, you are a software engineer, you have done something software internship related to it. I think it would be a good thing to include anything which is related to the field you are applying for in CV. And in what the letter of motive. To, uh, sorry, what happens to someone who do not have experience in that case? I'm saying the project works, what are the project work we have done in the final year or internships generally which we do in the engineering background itself. I'm saying this because only one person gets selected from whole India for one course. So for my course I was the only one so it will be an advantage if you have something related. I'm not saying that you will not be selected if you don't have any experience or anything. First thing which I have uh, heard from my coordinator for the main consortium. Percentage is the first thing which they see. I was troubled in that thing because I have only 82 percentage. They felt it was very low. But my work, it got me the scholarship. So I was saying, I'm. we cannot say only work experience gets it, but any work related to this will help you get to the next level. You may be selected in the first level, it will be easy if you are having good GPA, but to get a scholarship, I think it will be better if we have some related project work or any internship. That was my feeling. I've heard some things from my professors who have students who got selected for Erasmus. They too have told at least one project, the final year BTEC project, uh, to show that you are uh, in the same path. You want to do this from the early stage not like you just randomly got there, you wanted to apply to get something. So that was my feeling and that's what I was told from my mentors. It would be an advantage. I don't say that it is not a disadvantage if you don't have anything. But as this is very competitive, so I think it'd be a better thing if someone has related things. Very minute things do come into picture in CV. In regard to motivation letter, I'll tell you what I have written. I have generally started from my uh, BTEC uh, percentage thing. I've included my internships I've done with IIT Roorkee, with my guide, one of my guide. I've published papers, all the related steps. I have done it in step by step. Like whatever I have done in my bachelor's, my internship, that was going into my first, second paragraph. First paragraph was my introduction about myself. The third paragraph was because I have an uh, work experience. I've included that. That too was related to flood risk. So that 
uh, thing made uh, an impact which helped me to get it but you applied for three different uh, yes exams, right so uh, how was your cv yes. and your motivation letter did you make it different yes. different course yes i made different for the three things environment and flood risk were quite related because i had uh, similar things done in my uh, after my engineering but for ocean engineering i have not write any experience anything i've just written like i was interested in water related topics i have found four out of which i have applied three so there was nothing to back me up in my motivation letter when it went to ocean engineering maybe probably it was the reason i did not get to next level it might be a thing because people tend to pick people who have already minimal knowledge in that subject if any freshers they do pick freshers but we have to show that we are interested in it we have something learned which made us uh go in this path how did you know about erasmus mundus and how did you know that there was a scholarship available in first place yeah actually i got to know in around 2019 i missed the deadline of december my mentor his name is r maheshwaran he was a professor in iit delhi iit madras etc he came to our college while i was in third year his student got selected for erasmus but eventually he did not join because he got some other role. so he introduced me with him told him that as you are working the similar uh, thing whatever they are teaching you have already applied it in the field so you should try it out i have talked with some people with iitns because generally any private university people for example we have talked about it uh, like we don't get more uh, no, details about these kind of uh, scholarships only majorly iitns and iitns know it so i too got the information from iitns itself they have helped me like guided me through like what is this erasmus thing how do they sponsor how it will be helpful for our future so my mentors was the only source uh, did you have any interview specifically for your selection no for actually for the ocean engineering university of bogona used to have an interview but i was not uh, selected so i did not get to these two courses environment and flood risk did not have an interview they went through all the documents documents and my experience letter was research publications those were the only source for their selection so regarding the application process itself how easy and how simple or how difficult was it for my courses which i have applied it was quite easy we were diverted to the consortium directly we had to have our transcripts cv the references to we had to apply generally they ask for a mail but in our case they asked us to apply experience that it's quite easy like click upload that's it did it's you have to easy. pay any money no that? nothing okay. there is no money nothing they do give an email for any queries for generally for in germany we need ielts but my consortium was netherlands so i did not give any ies the english certification from my bachelor's university was sufficient there was no need to give ielts to they'll give an email id they'll uh, solve every queries they'll give a step by step guide so that we don't miss anything it was quite easy like the normal application form just four to five things which you need to be filled but any other tips you have for people who are applying for erasmus mundus scholarship specifically in engineering domain in an engineer i think they should start applying beforehand rather than waiting for last because i had some problem because as i was from diploma so the first year certificate was missing because i joined second year directly so they had a query if you are submitting in the deadline maybe two days they'll not have time to revert back as the deadline completes the thing gets locked they might open it for you but if you miss any document they may not help you back quickly so if you apply beforehand and check what is the course what is the main things which they are teaching and based on that you back your uh, interests or experience so that it will go to the next step quite easily mm. i have got a friend who applied with me he has to the same experience he too went till the last day but he did not get that uh, so he applied a lot later did not get a chance i don't know if there were any mistakes or anything 
but if there are any mistakes from our side they would be helpful because they'll have time if we apply it earlier mm. so based on the cv and motivation letter it's quite basic we have to show that you are eligible like we have to show your skills if you do not show your skills no one will know so what is best in you you have to put it straight to the point they do have a separate format as you know europass cv they ask quite extensively about everything if you give correct answer they will be easy to shortlist you mm. and motivation letter as i have told you step by step don't drag the paragraphs like essays like quite to the point what you are wanting to do so that's it majorly if you get your motivation letter right half of your work is done there that's what i felt was there a word limit for motivation letter or there was nothing limit no there was no word limit for motivation letter i have given a two pages motivation letter and a cv was around quite large six three pages or four pages so there was no word limit so what do you think about the scholarship and uh, you think it's good generous something you're happy about and you might have you're not gone to europe yet but you're you have seen us have done it so what have you heard from them about this yeah, it's quite good actually uh, generally if any person without scholarship if you assume he has to struggle a bit like you would have some tension based upon the expenses or something else but if you get a scholarship will have a set up mind like you can just focus on your studies in this scholarship you don't need to worry about anything else because they are coordinators they'll help you through everything based on what i've heard from my colleagues studying already they have told it's quite easy in within a week you'll get set to everything in the classes we uh, will be like they not be like in india but to be very helpful and everything is going on good for them now but we don't know what will happen in the future based upon the past circumstances so everything will be set if you get a scholarship you don't need to worry about anything you just have to concentrate on your studies or any related things but do you know what uh, the scholarship will include in your case what not it yes up? i do know because we have got an agreement whole agreement thing about four or five pages with all the expenses which they'll be giving it to us for example travel they reimburse every travel throughout the two years accommodation they'll give around 1000 euros per month for accommodation we'll have some installation charges of around 3000 euros for any installation when you are going into the other city yeah that's it we are we have already got our two years travel insurance and the other medical insurance system so it's quite said they've already they will directly pay the fees so you don't have to worry about the fees and anything they'll give a travel card you can go throughout the country with that so what are yes. the steps of this and uh, how what do you recommend for prospective students who are looking into the visa process yes the general conditions apart from covid because covid disturbed everything we'll talk about the general scenario if you get a scholarship uh, they, uh, they'll give the recommendation letters to you from the uh, both the universities the main consortium the first consortium everything will be given it will be quite easy for you i have got my visa approval in 7 days i have applied it on october 6th i got my approval on october 13th still waiting for it stamp uh, to be stamped because now due to covid they are not taking the passports we have to go again and give so the visa process is quite simple for erasmus scholars or any scholars no need to show any block background you don't need to worry anything you should i uh, should give your documents like all your cvs your uh, certificates in the erasmus thing It's quite done maybe within 15 to 20 days we'll get your visa so what were the specific documents you had to show for oh, the scholarship and which yes. is country you applied for uh, the visa my first country is germany so i've applied a german national visa for the two years so no need to apply visa after 6 months because i need to go to netherlands after 6 months uh, so the documents which we have given were all my bachelor's trans uh, the main document xerox copies my passport the all the agreement given by erasmus regarding scholarship 
physical presence letter in this case admission letter cv if you have any work experience that too other yeah, than that for uh, something specific related to accommodation or bank uh, loan or anything no no nothing they did not ask anything about accommodation and the bank thing if you get a scholarship they don't ask anything we just have to show that agreement that someone is paying for you for example dad or erasmus or anything else you just have to show that proof how is your preparation in terms of intercultural experience starting with i don't know another 10 15 nationalities yeah. and uh, you're going to miss your home how are you feeling about that Yes, we will miss our home. It's been for twenty years. We did not go in there abroad or anything, so we will have some difficulty while going there. We already had a call with my friends from other nationalities. Most of them have suited, uh, like already got together, having chill party, everything. Like I am very much interested because I did not meet any foreign nationals. Like maybe few in a relatives, but other than that, meeting the people staying there. them with two years be quite nice to be adventurous for some people like me who is an introvert who doesn't talk much so it will be a good thing It's, we can learn new things if we uh, get out of our comfort zones so i think it will be nice this course will help us a lot based on the talks we study from my professors and yesterday we had a meeting erasmus day yesterday was erasmus day so we had a meeting with the professor and our seniors they too are saying it's quite nice so what's your preparation in terms of the essentials you would like to take what have you been what kind of feedback you got from your seniors yeah yesterday itself we got a call from our seniors regarding this so the basic essentials everyone will pack are the clothes major they have asked me not to buy too many clothes in my country because they might not suit to the conditions in germany the basic two three pairs of uh, jeans t-shirts would suffice there we can buy other related things the main things which they have told people from coming from india generally eat rice so they've asked me to get a rice cooker one of my two of my friends who are already studying they got rice cooker there it was very pricey they've suggested me to get it spices generally are indian spices we have too many of them so they've asked me to get them uh not for you but for them <laughs> yeah <laughs> once again the discussion with edita pawan kumar proves that you don't have to be from the so called prestigious institution as long as you have the desire and passion to succeed in your life succeed in your career and you have a solid profile it's not about the cgpa alone but a solid profile then you can be successful in erasmus mundus scholarship so go ahead and make a solid application and please do not forget to comment below if you want any kind of support very happy to help you out meanwhile do not forget to like subscribe and most importantly share so that somebody else can also make their dreams come true until then take care and don't forget to check all my videos on erasmus mundus you're going to learn quite a lot in that take care thank you